everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we're actually in the dental office and I am going to walk you through what I do for a typical exam. So when we have a new patient or sometimes if you have a recall patient, just gives you some things to look for and um, what to make sure that your dentist isn't missing. And make sure you stay to the end so you can see everything that needs to be covered when you get a dental exam. So stay tuned. I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to thank the people that have already subscribed and have been watching my videos. It really means a lot. The whole reason that I started this channel in the first place was so that I could help people, so that I can teach people in a way that's not threatening, that's not intimidating, you're not sitting at the dental office with me. And so I just wanted to say thank you. So I need your help. If you can comment below on different topics that you would like to hear about, um, anything that interests you, if there's certain things that you don't understand or you don't know and you want more info on, um, let me know because I would love to make those videos for you. That's why I'm doing this in the first place. Um, also make sure that you share with your friends and family so that we can get the word out. Uh, the only way that people can learn is if they know about it. So please help me um, just share the word, be a part of the community. I would love to give you guys more. So today you are gonna join me with a patient of mine in the dental chair and we are gonna go through the steps of everything that is needed for a full exam. Um, later we will shoot one about a cleaning so make sure to watch out for that so we can cover all of your hygiene needs and what to expect when you use your teeth cleaned and what we use and why we use it. Um, so stay tuned. Okay, so one of the first things that you do at any exam or that you should have done at any exam is we start off with your medical history. So we have you fill out some forms. Sometimes we'll ask you questions in the chair to update it if it's electronic. And it's basically just asking your previous history, any kind of medications that you're taking, any allergies that you may have, as well as any conditions, um, car accidents, that, that kind of thing to give us kind of a thorough history of what we're working with, what you have in the past. Now, a lot of the times patients will ask me, like, why do you need to know what medications I'm taking? You're just a dentist. Um, but this is actually really important because a lot of the stuff that we do in the mouth is directly correlated with the rest of your body. So if you're taking medications for diabetes, that can affect your mouth. If you are on different antiviral therapy, that can affect your mouth. So there's lots of components to it. That's why it's really important to give a good medical history. We also will ask your dental history the last time you went to the dentist, how often it's been since you've had a cleaning, uh, any habits that you have if you grind your teeth, if you clench at night, if you bite your nails, so we can kind of know what we're working with, as well as your brushing habits. Do you brush? Do you floss? How often? We then will follow up with a social history, uh, drinking, smoking, any drug use, and again, a lot of patients don't really think this is necessary, but most of the medications that we use here in the chair can have some interaction. If you have, if you do use recreational drugs, it's really important to let your dentist know so that we can be prepared so that we don't have any kind of a medical emergency in the dental office, as well as social history, such as smoking and drinking is actually really important because it can predispose you to certain cancers and make your risk a lot higher. So just being honest, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're your health professional. We're not gonna tell anybody we're doctors. So it's really, really important to be honest right up front when we're going through the medical history. The other thing that we wanna make sure that we cover in that is if you have any conditions that may warrant pre-medication. So if you've had heart surgery, that's really important for us to know about. If your physician recommends pre-medication for any dental work, again, tell us because we need to know beforehand um, so we don't do anything to harm you. Following that, usually we will, or at least what I like to do is ask, why are you here today? What's your chief complaint? What's your reason for coming in? Because if you don't feel heard, chances are you're probably not gonna wanna come back. So I just like to get to know you. What brings you in today? Is it just for a cleaning, just for a checkup? Is there something bothering you? Do you want your teeth whitened? Do you need your teeth straightened? So just finding out kind of what your motivation is for coming in is always really important. Finally, I think it's important for new patients in particular, who I haven't really had the experience with, to start off just taking a basic baseline for vitals. So usually we do a blood pressure, a respiratory rate, and pulse just to make sure that everything's okay. There's nothing that's like a big red flag for me to worry about before we do any kind of treatment. All right, following your medical history, typically what'll happen is the assistant will come into the room and she will either take you to a separate room to have a panoramic radiograph taken, or she might actually just take some x-rays in the room depending on when you need them and which ones you need to have. 
typically x-rays and how often you have them is based on your caries risk, so that your risk for decay or for problems. Again, if it's a patient that's new and I've never seen you before and we can't get your x-rays from your previous office, lots of the times I like to take one just so we have one on record. Um, pans, which are the big ones that spin all the way around your head, they usually last every three to five, six-ish years. Again, depending on your risk for bacteria, your risk for getting cavities, your risk for periodontal disease. If you're a lower risk, we don't have to take them as often. If you're higher risk, we want to take them more frequently. Um, we will then often in the chair take some bite wings. Usually that's what we do at recall appointments just to make sure that there's nothing going on. And then we might take uh, x-rays of the front teeth or even the back teeth just to kind of see the roots and the bone and make sure that everything in your mouth is nice and healthy. So after the x-rays, I usually will come back in the room and that's when we're gonna start the extra oral exam. Now, a lot of the times patients will come to me and they kind of give me this funny look when I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna feel your head and lips and neck and they're like, well, aren't you gonna look at my mouth, doc? And I'm like, yeah, we'll get there, but I wanna make sure that there's no lumps or bumps or pain or tenderness. Again, and this is what I will say most often to patients, I'm like, who else is checking this? It's not very often that you go to your family physician and they start feeling your face and start palpating around, unless you have a problem and you're like, hey, there's this like weird bump on my cheek that I just noticed. So it's actually really important to start with the extra oral exam. Okay, so we are gonna start with the extra oral exam. So one of the first things that we like to do is we just, I actually have them take their safety glasses off or just put them up at the top of their heads. Um, and what I wanna do is just kind of overall view their skin, make sure that there's nothing irregular, make sure that there's no, um, nothing that's really dry patches, anything that might look a little bit different, any discoloration, we're looking for lumps and bumps. So I'll just kind of start with a quick check over of the patient's skin. From there, I wanna start feeling, we're gonna start palpating your muscles for any tenderness, if there's any pain, if you have any problems with them, anything like that. I wanna check your sinuses, make sure there's no tenderness there. Sometimes if you have a sinus infection, when I press right here on your maxillary sinuses, it can be a little bit tender. So we just kinda of wanna do a checkup for that. We are going to feel your muscles. You've got your masters here. If you're a grinder cluncher, I might have you clench and relax and clench. Go ahead and clench and relax and clench and relax and see if there's any pain or tenderness there. I want to check your sternocleidomastoid, which is this muscle here, is gonna be turned. This big one that kind of pops out when we turn our head, I wanna feel the lymph nodes down. I wanna feel if there's any tenderness. I wanna check for any headaches. We're gonna check your temporalis muscle, which comes up here, it spans the side of your head. Make sure that that's okay, there's no pain there. I'm gonna have you swallow. Thank you. And we're just gonna see, we're gonna feel your thyroid, see if there's any hypothyroid. I've actually had a few patients who've told me that their dentist has recognized that they had hypothyroid just from doing a proper head and neck exam. We're checking for any asymmetries. A lot of the times cancers present as something that's asymmetrical. So if you've got a really big swelling on one side of your face and nothing on the other side, we wanna make sure that we notice that. We're gonna check your lips, especially if you're someone who works outside in the summer, one of the most common places for basal cell carcinoma is on your face, your cheeks, or your lips. So we wanna make sure that we're checking for anything like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have my patient open and close and open as wide as you can and close. We're gonna check that jaw to see if there's any clicking, popping, grinding, pain, tenderness, anything of that sort. We're actually also looking at, at your mouth when you're opening to see if you have enough openings. Sometimes we'll use a little scale or a ruler if you might have some limited opening to make sure that we know that your opening is not limited or refrained. Okay, after the extra oral exam, and I make sure there's nothing abnormal going on on your face, there's nothing on your skin, or a lumps or bumps or tenderness, um, then that's usually when I will swap to the intraoral exam. Now, I start by looking at the lips, cheeks, tongue, we're gonna cover everything. I have people say, ah, and stick out their tongue. They usually give me a funny look when I grab onto it. But we really wanna make sure that we're covering everything. We wanna look at the tissue. We wanna make sure there's nothing that looks like it could be cancerous. We wanna check to see if we have dry mouth, if there's enough saliva going on. So I'm looking at all of this in the intraoral exam before I've even started looking at the teeth specifically. I wanna start by taking a look at your lips. We're just gonna feel, again, for any lumps or bumps. We can get these little mucus seals or swollen minor lymph glands that can happen. So we're just gonna feel all the way around, palpate, see if there's anything abnormal. While I'm doing this, I'm also looking at the lip tissue consistency again, just to double check, make sure there's nothing weird going on. From there, I'm gonna look at your, something called your buccal mucosa, so it's basically your cheeks. In people who are chronic grinders, clenchers, we can often see a line right down this. Sometimes they can chew their cheeks. Um, there's different, 
different things that can form this. So we just want to make sure that everything looks okay. We're then going to move to what's called our mucal buckle fold. That is the gap between your cheek and where your tissue here is attached around your teeth. So it's right here. We just, again, are looking for anything abnormal, any discolorations, anything that's tender, any of that kind of content. Okay, from there, we're going to move actually to the roof of your mouth. That's called your palate. And again, we're looking for anything unusual, any changes in color, any changes in consistency or texture, if there's any swellings. Sometimes people will have a little bump right here on the roof of their mouth called a tori. That's okay, it's normal, it's just an extra bit of bone. We're gonna move to the floor of the mouth, the same thing. There's a little, there's sometimes you can get these little tori's right on the inside too. If you have that, it's okay. I'm gonna feel here for any kind of cysts, any swellings. You might do something called fleek where you shoot a little spit out. I've had it happen a few times. My patient did not do it today, but it can happen. We're going to then follow up by checking the tongue. So what I'm gonna have her do is she's gonna stick her tongue out for me. Go ahead and stick it out. I'm gonna grab onto it with my two by two. And we're just gonna check, really, really important to check right here on the back under your tongue. That's with the number one site for oral cancer. So it's super important to make sure that your dentist is checking that out, making sure there's nothing weird or discolored underneath. Finally, I'm gonna have you open nice and big and say, ah, ah. Make sure there's nothing going on in the back of your mouth and you're gonna close for me and just bite and we're gonna check your teeth and how they come together. Make sure that everything looks okay. We'll check your, what's called your occlusion, how your teeth contact each other and decide if you need any kind of orthodontic intervention. The last thing that we wanna assess is if there's enough saliva. So this is something that we just kind of do as we're doing the exam, as we're feeling around. In her case, she's got lots of saliva. You can see it, which is great. Saliva is actually protective. We want it. Some medications that we can take can actually cause dry mouth, uh, which puts us at higher risk for getting cavities, which puts us at higher risk for dental disease. So saliva is really important. So lots of the times when I'm doing the intraoral exam, I'm just kind of observing the saliva consistency to make sure and the amount to make sure there's enough in it. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do, and either your dentist or your hygienist might do it, is something called a periodontal exam. So what we're going to mainly start with is we want to look at our gum tissue. So I'm going to just pull her lips back and we are going to check out her gums. So we want to look for this nice pink tissue right here. And what happens is that it actually goes down into this part here where it gets a little bit purpler, and that's our mucogenital line. So we want to make sure that there's enough of this keratinized tissue, is what it's called, meaning this attached tissue right here, so that it's nice and healthy. From there, we're gonna actually look too at the surfaces of the teeth. We wanna make sure there's no red, tenderness, inflammation, swelling, anything along those lines. Your hygienist or your dentist will start probably with probing, where we're gonna look at different tissue depths. The numbers one, two, three are normal. Anything over a three means there's some kind of inflammation going on. You might have some attachment loss, there's some gingivitis. If that's the case, four is kind of a warning light. Five, six, anything above that means there's probably a bigger problem going on. When you have these deep pockets, it's really, really hard to keep them clean at home. So it's super important to talk to your dental um, health professional regarding that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna probe around. Now, we're also looking for spots with bleeding. So if there's any spots that are bleeding, that tells us there's that inflammation going on around the gum tissue. So for her, we've got a pocket here of two, two, two. This is a two, two, two. It's a three, two, two. Two, two, two. And you can see there's a little bit of bleeding going on here. So there might be a little bit of inflammation in her gums. We also want to check, and in her case, she doesn't have any, but in your molars where you have multiple roots, sometimes we can get something called a furcation involvement. What, do, what this means is that our probe will actually go up in between. It also is a sign that you have some bone loss going on in that area. So you want to make sure that they're checking for that as well. We want to follow up with some mobility. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move the teeth and see if there's any kind of movement. Now in her case where she doesn't have bone loss and she's still pretty young, we don't really see any movement going on on these teeth. However, for some of you, what you might find is that when they do this, they'll start calling out class one, two, or three mobility. Class one mobility is pretty minor. Class three is a lot more advanced. Usually when something's got a class three mobility, we're kind of on the fence as to whether we can save it or not. Okay, the last thing that they might do is something called a plaque score, which basically what happens is we use this disclosing solution and it will stain the spots where you have plaque. From there, we're able to calculate the amount of numbers of tooth surfaces that are covered in plaque and it'll help us to educate you on places that you need to brush better, places that you need to floss better, and where you're missing it for future dental appointments. After the intraoral exam, that's when I start to do my tooth detection or the classic dental exam 
where we start looking at the teeth. We want to check for any new decay that's forming, maybe any old decay that's forming, any restorations that have previously been placed to make sure that they are still good, that they're still functioning, that they're not cracking or wearing, or the margin, which is the gap between the tooth and that material, isn't open. And then we also want to look at the health of the gum tissue around each tooth and what it looks like. Is there recession? Is there attrition, which is kind of the grinding on teeth? Is there any kind of fractures? Um, we'll check your bite to see how your teeth are coming together, to see how they're aligning and to make sure that we don't need to do any kind of orthodontic intervention. We are going to take a look at the teeth. So what I'm checking for when I'm doing this is we're kind of combining the x-rays that we've taken previously and what we're seeing in the mouth clinically. So it's really important to have your dentist dry off your teeth beforehand so that we don't have any spit bubbles that makes it a little bit hard to see. So I'm just gonna dry her teeth off a little bit here. And what we're checking for is any kind of decay. We want to look at any kind of old fillings that were there before, crowns, bridges, implants, root canals, anything that you've had done in the past to make sure that it's still okay. There's no recurrent decay. There's no infection going on underneath it. We're checking for stains. We're looking for cracks in the teeth. Maybe you grind and clench your teeth and you have little cracks in them that you weren't aware of. We are looking for any kind of attrition, which is tooth on tooth wear. If you've started to wear down your teeth a little bit, we are looking for anything called abfraction, which is seen along the gum line. It's kind of that cupping out that we may see that has to do with maybe brushing hard or a little bit of different flexural forces that we put on our teeth. We also want to look for any kind of acid erosion, any wear patterns, anywhere that we're grinding the teeth down. So in her case, she does have a little bit of wear going on on her canine, which is pretty common. Most of us use our canines to, to move our jaws around. So we're gonna have just a peek here. We're gonna look in the grooves of all the teeth, make sure there's no cavities going on, make sure it's nice and hard tissue. I'm gonna check around the gums again, make sure that there's nothing going on. We'll do a visual exam with everything. Again, super important to make sure that the teeth are dry so we can see everything clearly. And in her case, she doesn't have anything going on. She's barely had any dental treatment done. So there's not a lot to check out for, but depending on the complexity of what you have in your mouth, this may take longer. If you've had a lot of crown and bridge done, if you've had a lot of uh, different fillings done, even people who have dentures, they think, well, why do I need to have an exam done because I have dentures, but it's really important to make sure that the dentures are fitting properly, that there's nothing going on on your gums, that you don't have any sore spots on your tissues, that there's no fungal infection. So even if you don't have teeth, it's still important to get a thorough full exam done. That about wraps it up. That's pretty much what I do for the exam part of a dental exam. Um, Along with looking in the mouth, as I said, I'll be referencing the patient's x-rays. We have their medical history that we discussed. It's all very important, it all ties together. Following that, usually is when you get your cleaning. So that's when we go into the cleaning one, which will be in my next video. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what you should expect in a normal exam. Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad that you got to come with me into the dental office and see some of the things that I get to do on a daily basis. It was so much fun having you here. Uh, if you like this video and the content that we had, make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell, and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also comment if you have anything that you want to see, any other videos. The idea for one of these videos actually comes from people that are like, hey, it'd be great if you could show me blank. So make sure that you comment below. I had so much fun with you today and I would love to keep making videos for you. If you like this content, you can also check out more on Dentist Jess on YouTube. I've got a few other videos with things that I am passionate about and I hope you are too.